to the basement top location <laughs> today we're going to talk about where's my flying car who's ever dreamed of having a flying car i have and in fact i got a little involved in one of the forerunners of a flying car let me tell you that story Ever since we drove or learned to fly, man has dreamed of having a hot rod on the ground that could fly in the air. A Jetsons utopia. But forget the 50s retro cartoon. It actually started in 1841 with the Henson Aerial Steam Carriage. William Henson and John Stringfellow before the Wright brothers patented a flying car and it never flew but in 1917 a flying car nearly flew and it was designed by the Curtis Aviation Company. Glenn Curtis's airplane debuted at the New York 1917 Panamerical Aeronautical Exhibition. Aluminium body, plastic windows and a heater but World War One came along and he made a fortune out of fighter planes and not a flying car. But there has been a flying roadable vehicle around for a while, and that's an autogyro. This is the 1923 Pitcairn PCA2. Autogyros are the true predecessors of flying cars. It was the first rotary wing aircraft to achieve type certification in the United States. And amazingly, in a promotional stunt, landed on the White House lawn. And then we had some weird ones. How about this? The 1937 Waterman Aerobile. Waterman's modified six cylinder upright Studebaker was built in 1937. Only five were ever produced, but he intended to go into mass production. Never happened. And this is a classic, the 1947 Convair car. The Convair car is not a hoax. It actually flew in November 1947. A one hour demonstration flight ended due to lack of fuel and an emergency landing destroyed the car. Everyone survived, apart from their flying car dream. And I love this one, the 1959 Ford Lever Car. Their catchphrase for the Lever Car is, it doesn't need roads. With a top speed of 500 miles an hour, none were built. And this is one I've sat in, the 1966 Aero Car, and it really works. I've seen it flying and occasionally they come up for sale so you could get one. And this is Paul Moeller's true Jetson mobile. Four swivable jet engines, beautiful red. Never really took off, but it still looked pretty cool. And then I come into the picture. Let me tell you a story. I first took flying lessons in the UK but learned to fly really in the United States, in central Wisconsin in the Midwest, a beautiful state, in a unique small town with the most amazing workforce. The town was dominated by a large paper mill and almost everybody was an engineer. I've seen some of the best home-built cars. They designed their own boats, outboard motors, and airplanes. The skill level of the engineers of central Wisconsin is legendary. So a new startup company based down the road from Wisconsin Rapids said, ooh, what a great city to build Cirrus aircraft. Today, the world's number one manufacturer of general aviation light aircraft and jets. The city I lived in called Wisconsin Rapids has a beautiful airport, building land, but most of all, an engineering base bar none. Cirrus approached the town council to build a general aviation factory at the airport and 
they were turned down. The city at the time was dominated by the paper industry and they didn't want a rival taking away their skilled engineers from possibly higher paid aerospace jobs. So it never happened. That was a bit before my time, but I heard the story when I got involved in the politics of the airport and the local community. And then a flying car project came along. This one, Terrafugia, based originally out of the east coast of the US, Boston area, they were looking for the ideal manufacturing base. A city who could help them invest, build a factory, a skilled workforce, and a wonderful airport. Hang on, Wisconsin Rapids. I'd met the CEO of Terrafugia and suggested that Wisconsin Rapids with the Cirrus story would be ideal, and he completely agreed. And guess what? It didn't happen. For exactly the same reason, the politics of the city still were holding on to the dying paper industry. Later on, they desperately looked for diversity. They could have been a general aviation and flying car powerhouse. So that's my personal story. But today I've seen this. Stefan Klein of Klein Air and Klein Visions flying car. A sports car with wings that pop out, tail boom that extends. It's a beauty. Just watch this flight. They're working with BMW to produce this car, which looks fantastic, with a range of 600 miles in the air and a top speed of over 107 miles per hour on the ground. I want one. And personally, I can't wait for the full electric aeroplane flying car. The Renault Zoe aeroplane. We can all have dreams. The truth is out there.